happy new year to everyone out there. A new year means we are back on the Nebraska Prep Zone Report. I'm Dylan Adams, joined once again today by Stu Pospisil and Mike Patterson. And we're going to recap all the action from the Metro Holiday Basketball Tournaments, um, including previewing the, the final games tonight. But we have to start today's show with uh, some heavy hearts. You know, a very special piece of the Gretna community has passed away uh, last Saturday morning, of course, Longtime basketball coach Brad Feakin and Stu, you were at Creighton Prep on Saturday to take in that atmosphere. Um, it had to be, you know, one of the more emotional finishes to a game, I would say, in your career. Um, if you want to just start with what that day was like and and kind of what you remember most. Yeah, Dylan and Mike, you know, it. Uh, you know, I got uh, notified by Sam McEwen about 11 o'clock that Brad had died and we had something up pretty quick on, uh, you know, his passing. He he went in uh, uh, with hospice care at 4.30 that morning. Uh, the team was notified about uh, mid-morning. They stayed together uh, the rest of the day. Uh, came to the gym. Um you know, the, the tournament officials, uh, they wanted to do something appropriate. They cleared a moment of silence with, with, uh, Bill Hurd, who, you know, is, was like a brother to, to Brad, uh, college roommates, uh, you know, coaching, uh, colleagues, you know, uh, you know, the, the Brad or Bill was Brad's confidant. And, you know, I mean, it was a very hard day for Bill just to get through and you know the the uh a lot, a lot of the teams were wearing four feet t-shirts um papio south student body uh showed up in green papio south jerseys the uh you know the the left cutout had a a green band on it the, the strap on the jersey um you know, just an outpouring of support as there has been over the past two years. You know, I mean, I, Gretna and Westside after the football game a couple of years ago didn't have the best relations, but, uh, you know, Westside was one of the first to buy a hundred four feet t shirts and pass them out to their students. So, you know, it, it's, uh, the basketball community is tight and it showed that night, you know, for, Gretna ran on emotion the first half and, you know, everything was going in second half. It was, it was like the, the rim just was, was not receptive at all. Uh, the, the dragons fell behind, but Landon Porkowski drove the, the length of the court, uh, put up a short shot from the baseline uh, with about three seconds left, pulled off the win, ran down court, um, you know, maybe three quarters of the way down, he starts pointing up at the sky and, you know, extremely touching emotional moment. And, you know, Bill Feakin or uh, Bill Hurt, again, you know, Hurt and Feakin were, you could hear mix their names. They were that tight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bill Hurd, you know, barely met through the interview. And, and I said, let's just do this all at once. Let's not have three different TV interviews and myself and heard at and whoever, let's just do it at once and make it easy on, on Gretna. And, you know, the, the players were um, off, um, off limits uh, that day. Very understandable. There's been some nice tributes that they've posted on X since then. Uh, Landon Perkowski, especially uh, was one I saw, it, you know, it, it's, it's still a tough week. It was a tough night last night uh where you know central it was a gritty game uh you know it's one that uh uh you know bruce chubbick jr the central coach uh gave many plaudits to um just uh gretna for for their gumption and and grittiness and gretna now has one more game to play at lincoln north star on saturday and then I'm sure they'll be there in force at the Journey Church on Sunday for the uh, visitation from 3 to 5.30. And then uh, the church again is Monday uh, at 1 for the uh, memorial service. And I saw that um, those attending are asked to wear jeans and, and Gretna gear, and uh, they're going to serve cookies and coffee afterwards. So they're going to try and make it, I'm sure, a... a a celebration of life 
but uh, a lot of sorrow involved here. Uh, no doubt about yeah. it. Bill, and I was just going to add on a personal front, uh, I got to know Brad covering uh, the Gretna teams over the years and covering Gretna down state tournament. And, uh, you know, I would see him a lot at, uh, at the girls games when the boys would be playing after that. And, um, you know, I was uh, one of the first times I, I knew him a little bit, but uh, I was covering, I don't forget, it might've been a volleyball match, but I was wearing a, my bears jacket that night. And he came over and talked to me because he was a fellow Chicago bears fan too. And, we talked a little bit about that and, you know, we, we knew about his health uh, in recent years. And I, I always made a point to, to try to talk to him. And, um, you know, when word spread on Saturday morning, when our portion of the girls holiday tournament was going on at Bellevue West, it was really uh, kind of a, a somber tone there. You know, Gretna was playing, the girls were playing down there and, um, it, it was just a, a really difficult day for the high school community. I think, Stu really said it best when uh, he was talking about the West Side and the Gretna um, rivalry and in, in that football game, and that the West Side people were the first to buy all those uh, four feet jerseys. I remember I covered the uh, boys' game out there when uh, West Side was playing at Gretna shortly after that football game, and uh, just in case there were any hijinks, and there weren't, uh, both schools got along together well, but uh, you know getting back to Feek. He was just a, a really good guy. And, um, you know, I, I, I think there's really going to be a, a large crowd at, uh, at his services coming up. So uh, our condolences and, and best wishes and thoughts with the Feek and family. I think maybe they're underestimating this. And I don't know how big Journey Church is. I, I hope it has plenty of expansion room because you would think most of the Gretna community is going to turn out monday afternoon right because he touched so not just his his players where you have 12 15 come through a year but he was a seventh grade reading teacher par excellence yes you know I mean, he gets as many raves for his teaching as he does his coaching so you know again gretna is one of the last small town communities in the metro area you know now that they've split off into two schools they're on that uh you know, more uh, urban, suburban type path where you're not going to be as tight knit, but right now they are. And, you know, I, I don't know. I know I'm going to get there early to cover it on Monday, uh, but uh, yeah, it's just hard to predict. I thought maybe they'd hold it in, in the school gym myself, but. Yeah. yeah just... I, was, I, I was almost wondering if they weren't going to do that, Stu, maybe have some sort of a closed circuit. Uh deal with uh at the gym or or something they could, uh, they could they could pipe it in on because they've got the big screens the video boards they mm -hmm. could very easily do that but again you know you you're gonna have families that want to be together and i don't know I, you know i as, as bill said you know there, there's no script for this there's no there's nothing normal you know and i i was just trying to think back you know the Probably the, well, I can't remember the last time a, a coach at a class A, B size school, you know, uh, passed away during the season, you know, mm -hmm. while still active. I, you know, I remember um, Jim Kane out at Mount Michael, this would have been 2003. I'm not sure he, I can't remember offhand if he started the year, but he certainly was still living or still active with Mount Michael because they held that service in the gym. And that was one of the, the more memorable memorial funerals I've been to. I mean, that was a haunting finish there with the, with the student body walking out and, ch and chanting the school song. I still get choked up about that one. Oh yeah. And then, uh, you know, before that, I remember Ed Johnson, Lincoln Northeast, um, uh, uh, pillar for 37, 38 years there when I don't know, seven state titles with the Rockets. He had had cancer uh, and he made it through the season and, and died shortly thereafter. So it wasn't during the season, but, uh, you know, fortunately we have, we don't see many of these situations, but, uh, when you do, you know, you just, you do everything with a heavy heart. And, yeah. You know, and the, the fact that, uh, Feek was only 48. That's mm -hmm. so so young by today's standards. Um, 
three young yeah. children. You know, the, the oldest is, I think was 13. You know, I've got kids that turn 14 a day that hits home. Yep. No. And I, as somebody that never had the opportunity to meet Feek, you know, hearing all of this uh, support and, and, um, you know, the outpouring of, of emotions, really the thing that, that stuck out to me is that, yeah, he was much more, made much more of an impact on the Greenwich community than just being a basketball coach. You know, the, the relationships that he created with students, um, the passion that he seemed to have for, for teaching, that was really what stuck out to me. And um, hearing from, you know, the Gretna principal saying he was the best teacher he'd ever come across in, in his 28 years at the school. And, and then, and then watching Bill Hurd, you know, I, I think you said it best to just the, the valiant effort that he had just to get through that interview. Um, that was, that was really tough, tough to watch. Um, and he, he's, he's just done such a remarkable job and, and this really, really difficult position that, that nobody wants to really be in. So. No, you know, and it, you know, Gretna is going to be playing with a heavy heart, but they're going to be playing for Feek, but I think Feek would say you got to play for yourselves first. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, you know, we'll be watching this the, the rest of the season. You know, they've got a senior class with Landon Perkowski and Alex Wilcox, and who got a thousandth point the other or last night uh, in the loss. Uh, you know, Alex Wilkins and Cade Cook and Joey B. You know, that's their their starting five base and. You know, several of those guys, they're seniors and, you know, they probably weren't, they were hopeful that they wouldn't have to see this. You know, I mean, you know, I think from November on when um, Brad had to leave the team, you know, he, he started the year, coached them through the jamboree and then complications started arising. You know, it, um, you, you were always hopeful. But I, I think, you know, talking with, with people with the Gretna, you know, program, uh, I think he basically wanted to get through Christmas and enjoy it with his family one last time. Yeah, getting back to that uh, win on Saturday by Gretna to carry on after uh, Brad had passed away. I mean, that was a, a storybook finish and one that I think a lot of people are never going to forget. And um yeah just the fact that they had the perseverance to play that game and it, it's what coach Feek would have wanted and to to finish in that way and um you know you talk about see what happens from here on out the rest of the season Stu I mean it's uh it, it's going to be amazing to uh just watch the Dragons I think finish out this season under Coach Hurd, obviously a close, close friend of Coach Feek and, and, and see where that goes. But just uh, I, I think that win on Saturday is one that people are going to be talking about forever around here. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, yeah, Saturday at the tourney just was a different mood. It, it kind of lightened last night. And, you know, I we'll, we'll talk about the game tonight. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you just hope you don't see this too often and you know before we get into the other games i want to bring up another passing and you know it, it's amazing because you know you can be out of the business for a while and still have love and respect and walt smith uh out at ord he was their longtime broadcaster at kl or can knlv radio at ord just a gregarious guy Philadelphia born, came out here in the service, died at um, um, down in Bellevue this week at 87. But once you met Walt Ols or Walt uh, Smith, you never forgot him. And he, you know, just just a, a man of tremendous character as a character. And you know, the tributes on on X. You know, after I posted that on Sunday night, you know, I mean, they they kind of rival Feeks for for how he touched people with either being in person or over the radio and and the personal touch he would give broadcasting games and you know the 
there there haven't been many like him and i'm not sure there's going to be many that will come after him like that yeah when you have such a recognizable voice like that for a small town community that really is that really leaves a loss when they're when they're gone and you're you're so used to having the tradition of turning on the radio and, and hearing that hearing his well, voice he, all the games you know he probably hasn't broadcast for several years he he sure. uh, but again, that that legacy, you know, people remember these voices. You know, I mean, it's 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 like all the, you know the Lyle Bramsers and and uh, you know Mark Almonds and and Dick Janda, Dick's still with us. But uh, you know, we've Joe Patrick who we've lost. You know, we've got you know the broadcasting and the the um, print media in the state. You know, a lot of us have have been around for a long time, have had a lot of passion and, you know, uh, any tribute that, you know, Walt gets or anybody else that has devoted their life to Nebraska sports, especially high schools, well, well deserved. That's well said. So no, and once again, you know, thoughts, thoughts with wife, Jenny, uh, the three kids there. Um, and, and yeah. And his we'll, mother, his mother's. Her, yep. Uh, move move this way uh, I don't know how many years ago but uh, you know his dad was killed in a car wreck he was the well-respected coach at Adams Central uh, Brad went to Hastings High then to Doan and um, you know I think his mom was in teaching as well so that's where his his foundation was was in teaching and he met sure. Jenny he, he introduced himself um, to her the, the first day of I don't can't remember without looking if it was the first day she was at the school or the first day he was at the school but uh they struck up uh you know a, a wonderful relationship marriage and you know golly you feel for the kids and for her and and the entire Fekin family no doubt about it so if we want to try to try to move on here to to the action the other action we saw on saturday you know i don't know if, if you can agree with this too. it seems like we had the best eight you know, make it to those quarterfinals and it, they were going to be some awesome matchups. But then of course we had the, uh, the somberness at, you know, environment that day, but um, we had, we had Omaha central knocking down Miller North. That's probably one of the biggest upsets we've seen this season, right? Well, without doubt. And by the size that it was, you know, I think, yes. you know, Miller North can learn from it. Um, you know, Derek Rollins was solid inside, but uh, central, physicalness especially really rattled uh miller north outside shooters and you know miller north has four returning starters but they're gonna have to step it up because they'll see more of that um uh, you know coming down the pike you know the uh they were able to um you know take care of bellevue west you know in december but Bellevue West right now looks like its mojo is running really high and they, they take on central tonight. You know, it's, it'll be an interesting game of styles. Yeah. It's, it's the battle of purple, right? I mean, and I think you talked about in your story last night that these two teams, they have some history going back to the two thousands and uh, playing each other in state championship games. And now the Eagles, you know, trying to regain that old prominence and, here they are. They got that Delarian Thomas. He's hitting threes from the outside, but as you said, they also have the, the physicality and, and then it, it seems like it's going to be a battle of sharp shooters because Bellevue West has a pair of them too. And Robbie Garcia and that, is it is it Pulacek that knocked down? Pulacek. Yeah. You know, you had we've had three, three uh, players make eight threes in a game this yeah. year one away from Andre Woolridge's record and Woolridge played for Benson. It seems like yesterday to me, but it was 1992. <laughs> you know, unfortunately these kids don't know who they're the great players of the past are. Unfortunately, you know, I mean, you wonder how many of them know who Eric Strickland is. Sure. who played 11 years in the NBA. Yeah. You know, Woolridge and Strickland are one, two, still on the class A all time scoring list, but, uh, you know that's that's ancient history you know in this day and age and we we don't teach history well enough and you know i i think that's probably something that that uh you know uh 
Brad Feakin and Bill Hurd did at Gretna was, you know, you continue the tradition. But um, yeah, to have, and it wasn't like they were jacking up 24 threes. They did it with Robbie Garcia was eight of eight. Delarian Thomas was eight of nine and uh, or eight of 10. And uh, last night, uh, Polacek was eight of nine and <laughs> probably should have gotten to the line on the ninth. I thought he got bumped pretty good and it was a no call. Hmm. The ball came up. Ball came up like five feet short, and <laughs> the, the way the kid was being automatic and everything else, you're going, "There's no call on this." Yeah, <laughs> but he finished with 28. Is that right? Big night. 28. Yeah, he had two other baskets. Huh. It's going to be interesting. You know, Bruce Chubbick is going to want Central to to play strong enough defense to keep that game in the 50s. Uh, you know, long possessions. Uh, Bellevue West is going to want well, like they did eventually did last night run a team out of the gym you know it, it didn't happen the first half it was 31 31 with west side a team they'd beaten up on the road by 13 or 12 a couple weeks ago but uh once polachek got going and i thought jacob wrote um you know west side again um a shorter team except for tyson oddbody in the middle but a rope won that matchup inside with 10 points and a bunch of boards. And I thought the way a rope played opened it up the perimeter for Belby West to get better looks. Hmm. And Bill West, they, they got there. Yeah. So they beat West side. And before that they beat Brian with Amari Bynum, right. To, right. To, with Fred Hoyberg and company in the stands. And, and so this, this is the fourth straight final for him. And I think you mentioned that, but that's kind of history in itself going back to the sixties. That hasn't been done. Right. Right. Omaha tech was in the finals the first six years. Only won one. Incredibly. <laughs> yeah. One but, in five in those games. That's pretty crazy. One, and the Fred hair, the, the fabled Fred hair team didn't even win. Mm. Metro, which yeah, was one of their two losses during the year. But you had, you, again, you had great teams that, at Prep and Boys Town and Benson and uh, you know West Side at the time, you know it was uh, you know the '60s were a golden era uh, <laughs> when you didn't have you still had a nucleus of of sc large schools rather than now everything's kind of spread out and OPS right. is not schools now instead of five and and uh, you know uh, Prep is the only, really the only public or the only private boy school inside the city limits sure you know landscape was different back then no doubt so if we want to let's see yeah we're running out of time here on our zoom meeting so we better flip over to girls uh mr patterson you had um millard west rolling again last night and then they're going to play another omaha central squad right Central will be playing uh, in the girls' final for the uh, third time in four years, Dylan. So, um, and some of those players uh, are committed to trying to get it done. They finished as the runner-up both pre previous times to the powerful Millard South teams. So we'll see if the Eagles and uh, their senior point guard, Ainea Jones, who's had a great tournament, can finish it off tonight. And uh, they'll be playing Millard West our top ranked team and uh, both central and Millard West are undefeated. So uh, the Wildcats, of course, uh, led by the Gessert twins were being recruited by several colleges, including Nebraska and Creighton. Um, they've had a really good tournament so far. So uh, they haven't been in the final in a while. So we'll see if that comes into play tonight, but uh, yeah, great uh, girls final five thirty tonight at uh, prep central and Millard West. Like I said, both undefeated. Yeah, you gotta you gotta think those are the top two teams in Class A anyway right now, right? Right. Even though Westside uh, was the upset team, they they made uh, the semifinals. They defeated Bellevue West, who was our preseason number one, and uh, the Thunderbirds uh, were defeated on Saturday. So, um, yeah, Probably it's game of the tournament there. Double double yeah. win. Yeah. 80, 80 to seventy six double overtime. I have to mention one key play in that game was uh, at the end of the first overtime, uh, Westside trailed by a, a point and uh, they took a three pointer. It was an air ball and Sidney Pabin 
uh, Sydney Hagen, I mean, uh, right place, right time, was under the basket, got the ball, put it right back up and in. When I talked to her after the game, I said it reminded me of the uh, North Carolina State finish <laughs> in the uh, NCAA tournament that one year. She kind of looked at me like, who? <laughs> so, yeah, granted, Again, that goes back history. a long time. Jimmy V and, and those teams, yeah. but uh, that's what it reminded me of. She was just in the right place, right time, put it back up and in. Actually, they were behind by two because that basket tied it, tied and then it they won it in double over time. So, yeah, that really was the uh, the game of the tournament so far, Dylan, unless uh, tonight's game uh, beats it. We'll see. Yeah. We got 40 seconds left. Mike, you want to give a couple sh- shout-outs to uh, Russ Neinmeyer and Britt Prince? Right. Britt Prince goes over 2,000 career points. Russ Neinmeyer uh, last night became the uh, state's all-time girls basketball coaching wins leader with 639 moving in past John Larson. So two quick shout outs to those two. Yeah. And both those stories are on our website, omaha.com. If you want to check out more about that. Yeah. We better wrap this up for today. It's been a lot of fun guys. Thank you for joining me. We'll be back next week to talk some more rankings.